Hello Epic people, my name is Mike and lately I have been shooting a lot of club videos for my clients to a point where my friends are actually calling me I'm a club videographer now. So in today's video, I am going to share some of my experience as a club videographer, like which equipment, accessories that I choose to take to the shoot and what kind of settings that I use and what type of shots that I get in order to make uh, my videos for my client. Let's talk about gear. I agree with the statement when people say gear doesn't matter. Unfortunately, I hate to say this, but when you're shooting in a low light environment like clubs, having certain gear will definitely help you a lot to produce more cleaner footage, cleaner image. So for cameras, it will help you if you shoot with a body that has a good light good low light performance. For instance, I use Sony FX3 as my main camera and Sony a7 IV as my second camera body, which are both known to be very good in low light. These bodies have ability to shoot in high ISOs with a pretty good noise control. So if your camera doesn't have the best low light performance, don't be sad because we can make up for the next gear in the list, which are lenses. To make up for the performance of your camera body, you can also try to use faster lenses that have aperture value of f2 or faster. Um, this is going to help you open up your lens, uh, allowing as much light in as possible to help with you know, exposing your footage or lightening your footage up. Obviously, the best combination will be shooting with a good low light performance body plus fast lenses. But if you guys don't have both, you guys can always just balance it out. If you don't have a good low light performance, you'll try to get, you know, use something that has a fast aperture lens. Now let's talk about microphone. Uh, for me, I'm just making an overall recap of the event. So I don't really need to capture audio at the day of the event. But those of you who do, uh, I would recommend getting a microphone for sure for cleaner sounding audio because most of the camera, the microphone on the camera itself is not so good. Last but not least, gimbal. I shoot my video 90% of the time handheld because of the location where I'm shooting is very limited space because of a lot of crowd. Um, this prevents me from having a good path to use the gimbal. So unless I have a decent amount of space to walk around and have movement shot, I just shoot everything handheld. And the way that I edit my video is very pretty fast cut. So a little bit of a camera shake are not so noticeable. But there is a time that I do use a gimbal and this is when I absolutely want the wide shot. So when I'm shooting my camera handheld, I have my uh, active stabilization on, which kind of crops the image a little bit. But if I want the largest, widest shot possible, I will probably put it on a gimbal and turn my um, in-body stabilization off so I can get like the full image instead of a cropped image. So that's it for my gear. I'm trying to keep it simple because a lot of time it's mostly running gun setup. So let's talk about settings. First of all, there is no such thing as perfect settings. I'm just going to be sharing you how I shoot. So for me, I shoot video with 24 frames per second most of the time. And I try to use the 100 degree shutter rule uh, where I double my frame rate to get the most natural motion blur. So when you're shooting 24 frames per second, I have my shutter at 1 over 50th of a second. But if I feel like I need a little bit more light into my shot, I wouldn't mind slowing down the shutter a little bit to make up for, you know, the desired exposure. So I'll probably go down to like 1 over 40th of a second. And I do sometimes shoot slow motion in 60 frames per second and rarely 120 frames per second. And when I do, I do change my uh, uh, shutter to appropriate speed. 120 for 60 frames per second, 240 for 120 frames per second. Just keep in mind that increasing the shutter will make your image darker, so you will probably have to make up for it by increasing the ISO or getting faster lens. And for aperture setting, 
I 99.999% I stay wide open for the maximum amount of light. So if your lens is 1.8, I'll keep it at 1.8. If my lens is f4, I'll keep it at f4. Because most of the club's environment, there is no club that has a lot of light. So most of the time you are begging to have more light. So I'll just keep my lenses wide open. And for your ISO, this is something that you have to test with your camera body because every camera has a different base ISO value and noise level. If you guys are not familiar with a base ISO, I will link one of my videos somewhere here so you guys can check it out. So you know what the base ISO is. But going back to subject, make sure to test your highest ISO that you are comfortable shooting in. Obviously, you want to provide the clients with the cleanest video. So you want to know what is the limit of your ISO level for your camera. And white balance. This is something that I had, I had to play around a lot. Um, whether if I want to set the actual Kelvin value or just leave it in auto. And this is my thoughts on this setting. If I'm not going to be doing any crazy color grading or creative artsy color grading for my footage, I wouldn't mind just leaving it in auto white balance because in club environment, there are so many different lights that are changing constantly. It's hard to really set a correct white balance anyways. But if you're planning on doing some artistic, you know, color grading, then obviously you're better off just setting your Kelvin value. For me, when I do set my value, I'll stay between 4,800 to 5,200 Kelvin. And this is also personal preference. And those of you who are, you know, capturing audio also, this is pretty simple. If you have a microphone that does not have a gain control, just um, adjust your volume on your camera so it does not hit the red uh, section of your audio meter. And if your microphone does have a gain controller, try to put the volume to the lowest on your camera and then you adjust your sound um, on your microphone to, you know, to a correct level. And obviously you don't want to hit the red spot on your audio meter. And for video orientation, depending on what your client wants, you either shoot horizontally or vertically. And if you have to produce content on a both orientation in post, obviously I recommend you shooting horizontally and cropping it in post so it will fit your you know, vertical content. But you just have to let your client know if you do this, then you're gonna be losing some quality compared to the horizontal because you are cropping the actual footage. Oh, and just a little tip, if you are doing that where you are making both horizontal and vertical content, just for later on in post to have a better framing, try to shoot a little bit wider to begin with. So when you're using your footage vertically, you will have a little bit more better framing. So let's talk about different um, shots that I take at the club and I'm not gonna be going over how I edit these I'm just gonna be sharing with you like what percentage of the whole video is taking up with a certain footage uh, for me I use probably 40% of the video to show the artists at their event like performing at clubs because I do have multiple artists that are performing so I just want them to have a certain amount of time in the video just to let people see that these people are performing. And 30% of the video I use is the crowd shots. So it shows how much you're enjoying the event and you know, just like dancing, smiling, talking, drinking. It's just overall just having a good time because you have to give the video vibe that everybody is enjoying this environment. And Around 20% of the shot, I will be shooting a wide shot where it will show the venue and all the stage design and all that stuff. So people know, you know, oh, this event is awesome because it has very good special effect or decoration or stuff like that. And 10% of the time, I'll be shooting like detail shot. Let's say if there's like a special effect going on like flames or like confettis or like lasers and such, I'll probably 
have detailed shot of those and also I'll get some shots of like DJs using their controllers or like their feet just stumping with rhythm and all that just something that has a little bit more close-up and with all this combined I'll mix these clips around to have some kind of a flow and some kind of a story instead of just having same beat all the time I'll probably start off slow you know showing the venue and changing it to a faster pace cut uh, when the you know music hits the climax section or when music drops the beat and that kind of stuff but overall i already said it multiple times it all depends on what your client wants and for me i'm making a video to recap the whole night and the main purpose of my video is to just show who was there and make the viewers uh, you know want to join these kind of events so let's talk about some miscellaneous accessories and one of the most important thing that i recently started taking are my earplugs usually most of the time these kind of club environment have very loud sound and these can actually damage your ears over time so make sure to bring some type of earplug when you're shooting at these events if you want to you know keep your hearing uh, for me personally i've been using my earplugs from eargasm which i really like and i'll probably make a review video soon the second thing i bring is a watch because i record different artists at the club at a different time so i need to be aware when the next artist is coming and when the artist is ending their performance because i want to capture the moment when they're done with their um, performance and engaging with the crowd, you know, saying goodbye, clapping, you know, that kind of stuff. Because those are the shots that could be useful when you're mixing on your video. And another important reason why I have a watch is because if the event has some kind of a special effect like a fire or confetti or lasers going off, you want to know what time they're actually doing that so before the time comes you can actually go to a certain spot so you can frame your shot and wait for that thing to happen and shoes obviously doesn't feel like this is very important but if you're planning on shooting handheld most of the time it's very important to have shoes that has some cushion on the bottom instead of something like boots because when you're walking and if you're wearing boots it's gonna actually have more camera shape compared to let's say you're wearing like a basketball shoes or something with more cushion so if you want your footage to be a little bit more stable I'll wear something that has cushion on the bottom and last but not least protection for your gear club is a place where anything can happen at any time of point of time so let's say if you're going through a crowd to get a certain shot and someone might hit your camera accidentally while they're dancing or spill a drink or all kinds of stuff so to make sure to have some kind of a protection maybe a cage or even an insurance uh, when you're shooting at this kind of environment because you gotta protect your assets so you can work anyway that's it for me today i know this was a very long video hopefully it was helpful if it did please give me a like and subscribe if you guys want to see more camera related videos in the future and until then i'll see you guys next time peace